The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. You know, wherever you go these days, you hear people speaking foreign languages. Mm Mm-hmm, that's true. Why, only the other day, a little Frenchman came up to me and said, uh, uh, Anchor Hawking, les plus fameux nom de vitre. What'd you say? Why, I agreed with him. Why? What does it mean? It means Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of the great city. (coughs) Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Busman's Holiday. Late afternoon, the Blue Note Cafe. Perched on a high stool before the gleaming bar is reporter Ann Williams. Beside her stands Captain Logan, chief of the Homicide Bureau, and facing them is Ethelbert, the head bartender. And the three look rather lonely. Uh, right now, I bet you he's standing in the middle of a nice, cool trout stream without a care in the world. Yeah, uh, a lucky dog. <laughs> While well, we swelter here in the city. Well, we'll have our vacations later, Ethelbert, after Casey's all finished with his. So we'll be able to top any fish stories he brings back with him. (laughs) Yeah, we'll have a big advantage over the guy. Boy, I'd like to have a fishing rod in my hands right now. A creel over my shoulder and a hat band full of flies. Oh, please don't, Captain. You get my mind off my work and I gotta stay behind this bar for hours yet. Yeah. You and Miss Williams at least have the rest of this day off. And we better start doing something about it, Miss Williams. And since Casey's away, how about an evening with me? Well, I'd like it. Uh, uh-uh. Maybe I better write the guy and tell him what goes on between you two. <laughs> well, go ahead, Ethelbert. I'd like to worry the lark. <laughs> so would I. But I'm afraid that any gossip he heard about us wouldn't worry him in the least, Captain. Uh, where'd you like to go? Uh, well, how about driving out to the beach? You can have a swim. Oh, or... that'll be perfect. Uh, you two are breaking my heart. Uh, we're sorry for you, wage slave. <laughs> Let's go, Miss Williams. <laughs> Come on. See you later, Ethelbert. So long. So long. Hey, Walter, bring up some more of those doggone lemons. Say, it's after four o'clock, and I'm hungry. Mm, me too. Or shall we go back into the blue note? Oh, have... I eat there so often. Let's go to Rodney's Diner. That little joint? Well, you can't get a better sandwich anywhere in town. And besides... I want to find out if Mamie got her engagement ring. Mamie? Mm-hmm. She's the cute little waitress at Rodney. Oh, yeah, the very young one you and Casey like. Mm-hmm. She just turned 17, and she has a very heavy romance with a soda fountain boy at Slagle's Drug <laughs> Okay, we go to Rodney's. Tell me about the heavy romance. Well, the course of true love hasn't been running smoothly. Harold, um, he's the boyfriend. Uh, the soda jerk. Mm-hmm. He's 18. He's formally proposed to Mamie and has been formally accepted. But she can't consider herself formally and properly engaged until he gives her a diamond ring. Practical gal. Oh, she doesn't care if the diamond's no bigger than a pinpoint, just so it's a diamond. Oh, sure. (laughs) Harold told her he was saving his money and that she'd get the ring for her birthday. But he didn't give it to her. Well, what excuse did he make for not giving her the ring? He told her his money was tied up. But he promised faithfully that she'd get the ring yesterday. So I'm... Naturally curious as to whether he may go. Oh, Miss Williams, you're just naturally curious, period. <laughs> well, here's my car. We'll be at Rodney's Diner in five minutes, get the vital information about Mamie's engagement ring, then it's us for the beach. Oh, with nothing to do but relax. Oh, isn't it grand to have a day off? <laughs> There's an empty table in the corner, Miss Williams. Mm-hmm, that'll be fine, Captain. Oh, there's Mamie. Hey, the kid looks as though she's been crying. Oh, and she hasn't a ring on. The hero didn't come through, apparently. Oh, I'm so sorry. 
She had her heart set on it. She's coming over here. Well, Miss Williams, hello, Captain Logan. Uh, hello, Mary. How are you, kid? What are you going to have? Why, um, just some coffee and uh, lettuce and tomato sandwich. A uh, double hamburger for me and coffee. I'll get it for you. Oh, wait a minute, Mamie. Yeah? Uh, never mind. Uh, you want to ask me about Harold, don't you, Miss Williams? Only you think maybe you shouldn't. Yes. Yeah. Did he give you your ring? I guess it'll do me good to tell a friend like you about it. He was in here only about half an hour ago and gave it to me. Well, then why are you so down on the mouth, kid? And why aren't you wearing the ring? Because it's a phony. A phony? Huh? Yeah. All I wanted was a little diamond, but I wanted it real. I've seen him advertise for as little as twenty-three seventy-five, only about eight dollars down, and the rest in easy monthly payments. Genuine diamonds set in genuine gold. I'd have been satisfied with one of them, but I didn't want a piece of eighty-nine cent junk. Poor kid. Harold lied to me. For months he's told me he was saving money for my ring, but now I'm convinced that Harold hurt Simon doesn't care anymore. He's fallen for somebody else. And He's given her what was to have been my ring. Oh, now, I can't believe that. I've seen you and Harold together, and he's crazy about you. I think you're imagining things about your boyfriend, Mamie. I ain't imagining he broke his word to me, am I? That I waited over a week for a ring he promised for my birthday and then finally got something I wouldn't be seen wearing at a garbage collector's picnic? Oh, that's too bad. The ring he handed me today ain't only a phony, Miss Williams. It's an old second-hand out-of-style phony. He must have bought it off a push cart. I got it here in my pocket. Look at it. The brass setting that doesn't even shine with them three big pieces of glass in it. Mamie? Hey, waitress, how about taking my order? Right away, mister. Excuse me, Miss Williams. I'll be back in a minute. Captain, look at this ring. Yeah, it's certainly old-fashioned. Say, hey, these are real diamonds. Of course they're real. And about ten carats apiece. In an antique filigree setting. Where did a soda fountain boy get anything like that? Yeah. Well, this must be worth it. Miss Williams. Hmm? The antique jewelry collection stolen from Carlton Bishop two months ago. Yes. The most valuable ring of the lot. In a dull gold, 18th century filigree setting, had three flawless blue-white old mine-cut diamonds in it. And the description fits this ring. Exactly. I'm sure that boy Harold couldn't have been the thief who stole the Bishop jewels. Now, before we speculate about that, I'll take this ring down to headquarters and make sure it's what we think it is. Uh, we're not jewel experts. Oh, uh, Mimi's coming back. Let me talk. Okay. I've ordered your sandwiches. They'll be ready in a minute. <sighs> Fine hunk of junk, Harold. Give me in. <coughs> Mimi, uh, I uh, don't suppose Harold told you where he got this ring. No, he just handed it to me and got right out, Captain. And he should have. Uh, the ring may uh, not be as bad as you think it is. Miss Williams believes the setting's gold. Looks like brass to me. Oh, nobody sticks three big hunks of glass in a real gold setting. Well, they may not be glass. They may be, <clears throat> well, uh, something a little better. Zircons, maybe? Uh, maybe. Uh, suppose I take it to a jeweler and find out for you what they are. Okay. And uh, maybe don't tell anyone that you let me have the ring. Especially don't tell Harold. I won't even see that drip. Oh, the counterman setting out one of my orders. Excuse me, Alvin. Who will you see at headquarters about that ring, Captain? Now, Mallory is in charge of the Bishop robbery investigation. Oh, Captain Mallory, hmm? Yeah. You and he uh, don't get along well together. Well, Mallory's a good cop, Miss Williams, but strictly off the record, he's a credit hog. He's butted into several cases of mine where he had no right to, and... Ah. What's that, uh, for? This ring may be the key to the Bishop robbery, and I might teach Mallory a lesson by butting into one of his cases and cracking. Oh, that I'd love to see happen. Miss Williams, this is our day off. Shall we take a busman's holiday? Captain Logan, the beach is out. You sleuth, and maybe I get an exclusive story. <laughs> story will continue in just a moment. Let's have a quick question and answer session about beer and ale. Okay, shoot. All right. What makes good beer good? Good brewers, of course. Right you are. And what keeps good beer good? Glass? Glass. 
Glass bottles? Yes, because glass bottles and glass bottles alone can bring you beer and ale as it comes from the brewery, unaffected by any foreign taste or flavor. And now we have a new kind of bottle. A new kind of bottle? A glass bottle that's different. It requires no deposit. No returns to the store? When the bottle is empty, just throw it away. And its other advantages? One, it saves space in the icebox. Two, it's a natural for picnics. Three, it belongs on the finest table. And four, don't forget, it protects the real brewery flavor. As only glass can protect it. Yes. The revolutionary new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle is sweeping America. For flavor, demand beer and glass bottles. For convenience, demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. A product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Ring is definitely one of the pieces stolen from Carlton Bishop Logan. I thought it was, Mary. Where'd you get it? I uh, found it. Found it? After a great deal of hard work. Captain Logan worked his fingers to the bone searching for that ring, Captain Mallory. Uh -huh. uh, practically, that is. Is that so, Miss Williams? You know the Bishop robbery is my case, Logan. Why have you interfered? The uh, Evanston murder was my case, Mallory, and the Borelli stabbing and the White Oh, affair. so that's the way it is, eh? Huh? Well, I don't know what you mean. Okay. We'll play it that way. Thanks for the ring. Thanks for your identification of it. Come on, Miss Williams. We'll resume our interrupted holiday. See you later, Mallory. Yes. I'll see you later. <laughs> Harold's in the drugstore, Captain Logan. You can see him through the window. That long, skinny kid back of the soda fountain there. He doesn't look like a crook, Miss Williams. That then crooks seldom do look like crooks. Well, I can't believe that he had anything to do with the bishop robbery. Well, he had that ring Mallory identified. Does the boy know you? Mm-hmm, yeah. There are a lot of people in the store. Someone might recognize me as a cop. And, uh, you go in and get the kid out. I'll talk to him here in the car. Well, what excuse shall I give him? Tell him who I am. I want to see him, but uh, don't tell him why. If he has anything on his conscience, that'll worry him, soften him up. I'll be watching through the window to make sure he doesn't try a runaway. Well, okay, I'll bring him out here. Captain Logan, this is Harold. Pleased, pleased to meet you, Captain Logan. Miss, Miss Williams said you wanted to talk to me. Yeah. Huh. Well, what's this all about? Miss Williams was sort of mysterious. Haven't you any idea what it might be about, son? No, sir. It's about a ring. A ring? That ring you gave Mamie. The stolen ring. How'd you find out I stole it? Oh, oh. you did steal it, Harold. No, it, it wasn't stealing, Miss Williams. I was only taking part of what he owes me. Carlton Bishop owed you something? Carlton Bishop? Well... <laughs> Who did you take the ring from, Harold? Well, my cousin Louis. Your cousin Louis? Yeah, I thought you knew. Well, we know, son, but uh, suppose you tell us the whole story. I might as well. I, I'll feel better when I get it off my chest. Yeah, of course you will. I, I know Mamie has talked a lot to you, Miss Williams, so you know I was saving money for her engagement ring. Yes, Harold. Well, I saved almost $100. I was going to get her a real swell diamond ring. Louis said he could get me one at wholesale, so I gave him the money. Louis didn't deliver, huh? No. I found out he'd, he'd lost my dough in a dice game. <laughs> nice boy, your cousin. Yeah. Oh, Louis swore up and down he'd give me my money back, but, well, he was going to be yesterday. He said he had a, a bet on a horse that was a, a sure thing. Well, Louis seems to be quite an operator. And then um, came yesterday and uh, no money from Louis. I couldn't even find Louis, Miss Williams. The day I got desperate, I, I went to his room in the house with my mind made up to wait there till he came in, no matter how long it took. And if he didn't pay up, I was going to take it out of his hide. Uh, that idea had merit. Now, how'd you get that ring, sir? While I was sitting alone in Louis's room, I got thinking of something he used to do when we were kids together. He's about your age? A year older, 19. Louis always had a loose board in the floor of his room at home with a space underneath where he, he hid things, like you see sometimes in the movies. 
I got wondering if he didn't have a hiding place like that in his home or not. I, I turned up the rug, begun looking, and, and, and pretty soon I found it. The ring was hidden there? The ring and a lot of other fake jewelry. Uh-oh. Uh, old-fashioned stuff? Like the ring, Harold? Yes, sir. Necklaces, bracelets. All of it looked like it'd come out of a junk shop. I took that crummy ring because... Well, the glass in it looked almost like diamonds and... I just had to have some kind of an engagement ring from Mamie. Now, did you take anything besides the ring? No, sir. I put the rug in the board back in place and left. Oh. But, but I ain't a thief, Captain. I only took back a little part of what that, that heel Louie owes me. We're going to pay a call on that heel Louie. And if you told me the truth, son, you won't have to worry about what he owes you. There's a whopping big reward offered for the return of the Bishop Jewels. Reward? Bishop Jewels? We'll explain that on the way to Louis. There's Louis' room and house, Captain. 409. Uh, it's got too dark to see numbers, kid. I'll park right here. You're almost in front of it. Come on, Miss Williams. Mm -hmm, okay. The door of Louis' rooming house left open? Uh, no, we have to ring. But Mrs. Pettengill, the landlady, knows me. Uh, she'll let us go up to Louis' room. Yeah, I'll press the button. Now, don't tell the landlady or anybody that I'm a cop. All right. I, it's hard to believe what you and Miss Williams told me in the car, Captain. Louis' a heel and a chiseler, but I never thought he'd steal. Or at least not anything big. Someone's coming to the door. Now, you do the talking, kid. Yes, sir. Uh, evening, Mrs. Pettengill. So you're back again. Yes, sir, my... I want to see my cousin. I want to see him myself. He hasn't come in. We'll go up to his room and wait. All right. But I'll be down here watching when you go out. Hey, what do you mean by that, Earl? I don't know. She ain't a very friendly woman. Yeah. Now, where's Louie's room? Four flights up. Oh, it would be. <laughs> This is Louie's room. Yeah, the door wasn't locked. He never locks it. Uh, I'll turn on the lights. Now, let's close the door. Is this room just as you left it, Harold? It looks the same to me, Captain Logan. Now, roll back the rug and show me that loose board. Yes, sir. There, here it is. Now, lift the board as you did before. Okay. It's a pretty tight fit. i got to use my pocket knife. Uh, there. Captain, the space underneath that board is empty. Where's the jewelry you say you left there, Harold? Oh, I don't know. It was full of stuff and I left it. I, I swear I did. Louis must have come the home. The landlady and... says he hasn't come home. But someone's been here. Say, what is this? Oh, What's going on? Now. Oh, hello, Harold, old pal. Why you got my carpet rolled up? I want to ask you some questions, Louis. So do I. Step inside, young fella, and we'll close this door. Who are you, mister? Who's this lady? Now, never mind the formal introductions. What'd you have under that loose board on your floor? Nothing. I didn't know there was a loose board there. You're lying, Louie. You always had a place like this where you hid things. That's way back when we were kids. It's now, too. You had jewelry hidden there this afternoon. Stolen jewelry. You're nuts. No, I saw it. I took a ring from it because I thought it was only phony stuff. Now I know it was real and, and that you came back here after I left and, and took the rest of it away. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to make you tell the truth. Oh, hold it, kid. Hold it. Harold, what time did you leave here with that ring this afternoon? About half past two. Now, where have you been since half past two, Louis? I've been shooting pool and I can prove it. Now, look here, mister. I don't get this at all. If you're a cop, I ain't done nothing. Except maybe I owe my cousin a couple of bucks. You owe me a hundred. It ain't no crime to owe. And if anybody thinks I've been up to anything funny in this room since half past two this afternoon, I just ain't been here. We're going to find out about that. I'll do the finding out, Logan. Well, Captain Mallory... Hello, Mallory. Had a hunch you'd tail me after we left headquarters. And I've been listening outside this door while you developed my case against these two punks. Well, it's open and shut. Miss Louie stole the bishop jewels and hit him under the floor. I didn't steal anything. I don't know what the story... Shut up. And the other punk found him and glommed the whole lot. I only took that And ring. you shut up. 
You took everything, you didn't believe the stuff was phony, you knew exactly what it was. Now, what have you done with it? I, I haven't done anything with I it. I never Take stole it. Take him down to headquarters, boy. Oh, Captain Mallory, wait a minute. This is my case, Captain Logan. Take him to the car, boy. I'm telling you, you guys. Well, I think you're all together right. wrong, putting heavy pressure on both of those boys, Captain Mallory. Oh, really, Miss Williams? Yes. Louis's no bargain. But I believe Harold's told us the truth. When he left here this afternoon, he had nothing but that ring with him. And then his cousin came back now, and... how did Louis, his cousin, get into the room? Through the window? He walked in through that door, of course. All right, come in here, Mrs. Pettengill. All right. This is the landlady here. Mm-hmm, we've met her. Uh, Mrs. Pettengill, tell this lady and, uh, the officer what you just told me. Nobody came through this here door from the time that Harold boy closed it. When he left the room at half past two... Until he came back here with you two. I know because the door was watched every minute. For the very good reason that that Louis fellow owes me three weeks' rent. And when a rumor owes his landlady, he's watched. Furthermore, I'm personally acquainted with Mr. and Mrs. Pettengill and know they're on the level. Well, thanks for bringing me that ring, Captain Logan. It helped me break my case. So long. So long, Captain Mallory. Yeah. Well, we should have gone to the beach, Captain. Yeah. Do you think those Pettengills are on the level? Well, Mallory wouldn't have vouched for them unless they were 100%. Well, then Harold lied to us. He didn't take just the the ring. He took everything. I believed him, Miss Williams, and it's a professional habit of mine to disbelieve. Well, I believed him too, Captain. Maybe someone was spying on him when he found that loose board and the stuff underneath it. And after he left... The only way anyone can see into this room is through the window. Well, it's four stories above the ground. But there's a window directly opposite. A dark window in the next house. And it's a good 15 feet away across that court. If anyone saw Harold from there, they couldn't have gotten across afterwards. Now, wait a minute. Come here beside the window. Okay, but what... Now, look. On the windowsill. Scratches. Uh, Fresh scratches. The kind of man's shoe makes. You think someone came in this window? Yeah. But no one could jump across that wide court. Not even a human fly could climb up those smooth walls. That guy couldn't have come down from the roof either. Well, then how... Now, wait. I think I've got it. This window once had shutters. Yes. When the shutters were taken down or rotted away, nobody bothered to remove their hinges. Look. There's strong, old-fashioned hinges set in concrete. Well, I don't see what... I'm turning out the lights here. Now, we'll get out of this room and close the door. Captain, what on earth? Now, I may get the Bishop jewel tape. Do you mind explaining? Now, come on. We're going down to the street and wait outside that house next door. When we see someone come out of that house with a bag or suitcase in his hand and something he can't pack in a bag or suitcase, I'll be sure I figured right. Something he can't pack into a bag or suitcase. A duplicate of something that Lug Casey has been enjoying himself with all day. Now that we're all set outside the house next door, Captain, will you uh, take me into your full confidence? Uh, sure. Uh, here's the way I figure it. A thief who got away with the Bishop Jewels is an experienced crook, and he knew he had to let this stuff cool off plenty before he attempted to market it in its most valuable form. Well, while it was cooling off, he didn't want it close enough to burn him if we cops walked in, and he didn't want it so far away that he couldn't keep an eye on it. He planted it in a house he didn't live in where he could watch it through a window. That's my guess. He put it under that board in Louis's room. And he was watching when Harold found the loose board this afternoon. Uh Uh-huh. So he had to move it to a new hiding place. Well, how did he get in here? Mrs. Pettengill would have seen him if he'd come in the front door. How could he come across the court? He couldn't jump, he couldn't climb, he couldn't get down from the roof. He pulled himself across. Pulled himself? With his hands. And I I figure he just pulled himself back again... When you, Harold, and I arrived, and he's been waiting for the cops to clear out of this neighborhood so he could make a getaway. But how did he pull himself across that court with his hands? And what is a duplicate of, of something that Casey's using on his vacation? Yeah, got quiet. To be... The guy's coming out of that house. Oh, he has a suitcase in his hand. And something too long to be packed in the suitcase. A fishing rod. A trout rod. <laughs> now, I'm sure, and I'm... Let go of me. What's the big idea? I'm a cop, fella, and I'm searching you. Ah... He had a gun in his pocket. Also, this little bag, Miss Williams. Look what's inside. The Bishop Jewels. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. And we'll just turn them over with this guy to Captain Mallory. It's his case. We'll 
We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. Too many people are talking about the heat. I want to talk about something cool. So let's imagine a big frosty pitcher with ice cubes tinkling against its crystal sides, ice cold lemonade or iced tea or delicious fruit juices. Now, whatever cool drink you serve, it will look better and taste better when poured from a new sunburst crystal pitcher. Now, what is a sunburst crystal pitcher? Why, it's a radiantly beautiful two-quart crystal pitcher in the magnificent new kind of crystal the whole country is talking about and admiring. It picks up light like a diamond and scatters it in a thousand flashing rays. And here's the surprise. You can own one of these magnificent sparkling sunburst crystal pitchers for only 50 cents. Yes, only 50 cents, or slightly more in distant cities. Look for it tomorrow in the windows and on the counters of the retail stores of America. Sunburst Crystal is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. I'll bet Captain Mallory wasn't happy at all when you handed him them bishop jewels together with a guy who really stole them, Captain Mallory. Oh, of course he was, Ethelbert. As a good cop, he was glad to see the case properly solved. Mm-hmm. He was as glad about it as a movie star when a co-star steals the picture. Oh, uh, sure. Say, you ain't told me yet how that thief got across the 15-foot court four stories above the ground. Mm, that was simple, Ethelbert. He pulled himself across with his hands. Ah. Huh. What? I don't get it, Miss Williams. Uh, I might not have tumbled to it if I hadn't been envying Casey his fishing trip vacation. Trout rods were on my mind. How does a trout rod... The thief had a 12-footer when the sections were fitted together. Holding it at arm's length, Ethelbert, and leaning out of his window, he could reach one of the old shutter hinges on the opposite building. And when he reached it... His rod didn't have a trout line on it but a strong steel cable that hooked onto the shutter hinge. And he fastened the other end of the cable to a steam pipe in his own room. Then, using heavy gloves, he pulled himself across the cable hand over hand. Well, it wasn't a difficult stunt. And when he went back across the court, he unhooked the cable with his trout rod and threw it in. Oh. It ain't difficult when you figure it out. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> You'll figure it out, Ethelbert. Does Mamie know, and has she forgiven Harold? Mamie knows everything. And she has forgiven Harold all. What's worse, she's going to marry the guy. And with the reward those two brats will collect from Carlton Bishop, Harold's not only buying her an engagement ring, but a wedding band and furniture. How about Louie? Oh, Louie still owes Harold a hundred (laughs) bucks. And chances are he always will. Prime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deeks. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Captain Logan is played by Bernard Lenro, and Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.